Welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'm going to get right into my experiences. So starting out, before I met my two Atsubis, I created what was called a shtek brief. And this is what mine looked like. It just has a little bit of general information about myself. And this was sent to my Atsubis before I met them, and I was sent one that they made as well, just so we could have a little bit of general knowledge of who we were speaking to before we met so we weren't complete strangers. So in my first meeting with my Atsubis, we instantly started talking about some of the culture shock they were experiencing in learning more about American culture. And the two things that they brought up to me that they were most confused about were um, the Electoral College. They were very confused how someone could win an election but not have the majority of the votes. Um, and they were also confused about the price of education. They didn't understand why a country would make it so difficult for someone to be educated when that would have a positive impact on society and the economy. And those are two things that I have been confused about as well for years. So I didn't really have any answers for them, but it was really interesting to see their genuine confusion when, even though it's something I too am confused by, I've sort of come to understand that this is just our reality. So some of the other topics that I discussed with my Atsubis during the remainder of the six weeks include mentors. I listened to them tell me about some mentors in their life and the role that they play. And in return, I told them about one of my own personal mentors. Uh, this is a picture of us. He is one of my dance teachers from high school and we still keep in touch and he truly does play a big role in my life. So I loved getting to share that with them. We also discussed love languages, and during one of our meetings, we actually took the love language quiz and we compared our results. Uh, these are my results. I'm not necessarily sure if I agree with them or not, but it was very insightful and I learned a lot about myself from taking the quiz. We also discussed elevator speeches, and for anyone who doesn't know, an elevator speech is a speech that you should have memorized in the event that you run into someone who could take you forward in your career. And it's just a little introduction to who you are and what you do and why that person should know you. I actually wrote an elevator speech when I was in high school. It was in regards to me being a dancer and that's not really relevant anymore because I don't want to be a professional dancer, but I could provide a little bit of insight on what exactly should be included in an elevator speech because I already had one prepared. One of my Atsubis actually caught on to the fact that music was super important to me, naturally being a dancer, and I also did musical theater in middle school and show choir in high school, and most recently I've started learning how to play the ukulele and the piano, so music will forever be very important to who I am as an individual. And so she started asking me about music and we started discussing the similarities and differences between German music and American music. And then my Atsubis tried to make some predictions about what German music was popular in America. And I did the same with what American music is popular in Germany. And it was really interesting because we were all incorrect with our expectations. So as I mentioned in my first video, on Fridays and one Wednesday, we had guest speakers for virtual field trips. And there were three people in particular that really stood out to me and had an impact on me in the sense that they really made me think about my own ideals. So the first is John Fluker, and this is his bio. I decided to ask him if being a black man living in Georgia, he had seen any changes since we elected our first black senator, Reverend Raphael Warnock. Um, he told me that he thought it had been a little too soon to see any changes, which makes sense for at this time it had only been two months since he had been sworn in. But he did say that he thinks that changes will be seen in the near future because of the election. The second speaker that really stood out to me was Vanya Allen, and this is her bio. Now, I had a connection with Vanya with us both being dancers who also have minority identities. Vanya's being that she is black and me being that I'm a lesbian. And I know that the ballet community is one that is very racist and homophobic towards women. So I asked her how she was able to work through some of that discrimination from the ballet world. And she told me that it was really tough when she was younger because she didn't have anyone to look up to. But as she got older, that became more of a reason for her to continue dancing because she wanted to be that person for other little black girls to see 
on stage dancing and know that they can do that. And so that was really inspiring for me. Last speaker that stood out to me was Brian Calhoun and this is his bio. Now the meeting he spoke at was right after different streaming services started threatening to pull Lil Nas X's song Montero from their platforms. So because he had a career in music, I decided to ask him what his thoughts on different companies bringing politics into their decisions were and I gave the example of platforms like Apple Music and Spotify threatening to pull Lil Nas X's song. He said that he thinks it's a good thing when the companies are intending to create good change because they have such a wide demographic and some decisions that they make truly can be the change in someone's mindset. So when the intention is to create a more accepting society, he thinks it's a good thing that politics are being brought into decisions. To quote Jim Henson, I hope to leave the world a bit better than when I got here. I live by that quote and I think it's one that accurately describes what all I'm taking away from the Peer Buddy program. To reference what the speakers told me answering the questions I asked them, they all just want to create change in the world for the greater good. And that's something that I want, but I think being in quarantine made me forget that. So I'm taking away the reminder that if I want to see change, I need to make it happen myself. And I'm hoping that that will push me to become an even better person in the near future.